Okay, so uh, good morning, hello. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, thank Emmanuel and the IHES for, for having me uh, generally speaking in, the, in this beautiful place and also particularly for inviting me to give this, this series of lectures. So I want to talk about point counting and the Zilber Pink conjecture. And uh, I guess the overall objective of the talks is to somehow, well, explain uh, the Zilber Pink conjecture and to, to, uh, to uh, hopefully uh, convince you that this is a many facet faceted and fascinating Diophantine conjecture. And, and also to talk about point counting, which is one uh, kind of tool which is um, quite useful, at least in some aspects of this conjecture. So those are the overall aims. And in terms of the lectures, I, so this lecture will be about the Zilber Pink conjecture. Um, yeah, the second lecture will be about point counting and the, the setting, the model theoretic setting of minimality in which it, uh, in which it's naturally uh, developed. Uh, in the third lecture, I want to concentrate on one particular uh, Zilber Pink problem, which I hope to explain at the end of, of this lecture. And uh, the fourth lecture, I haven't quite decided yet. I'll see somehow uh, on, on the first couple. So this lecture will be about the Zilber Pink conjecture. And I want to somehow explain a bit of a historical story which at the same time will introduce the, um, the main notions and the objects and the, the terminology and so on. So I think this, this story is very familiar to some people uh, in this room and maybe less familiar to others and please do interrupt and interject and, uh, and whatever. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and just interject actually, because if I take my glasses off to read my notes, then I won't uh, see other things so well. Okay, so the Zilber Pink conjecture ZP is a finiteness. It's a finiteness conjecture in Diophantine geometry. And it evolved from maybe the most famous such statement, which is the Mordell conjecture. So evolved from Mordell conjecture of 1922. which uh, was the finiteness of rational points on a smooth curve of genus at least two. So for example, any smooth plane quartic or higher degree curve fits that description. And it was proved by Foltings in 1983. So, however, in the meantime, uh, it, it evolved mainly, uh, mainly in the hands of Lang to something called the Model Lang conjecture. So let's talk about Model Lang. So in the same paper of Model, where he formulated this conjecture, he also proved the finite generation of rational points on an elliptic curve, which was then generalized by Vey to, uh, to rational points on 
and a billion variety. And this meant that one could look at the model conjecture, one could consider it by embedding the curve, curve defined over Q in its Jacobian, which is an abelian variety defined over Q, and intersecting it with this finite, finitely generated group of rational points. Or, if you like, you could intersect the curve embedded in its Jacobian with the torsion points, and then you would get the Manin Mumford conjecture. So all of these problems were Manin Mumford was formulated somehow in the, in the 60s when Lang was thinking about all of this. So you have this very important idea to embed the curve, let's call it V, in its Jacobian, which is an abelian variety. And, and this object here has some, has some extra structure which will, you can then make use of. And this is a very important idea in this kind of conjecture. And we'll see that silver pink has this form. It's about a variety that is inside something that has extra structure. Okay. So I want to talk, having talked about all these problems really evolved in the setting of a billion varieties, but I want to switch to the multiplicative setting, which is, I want to switch to the multiplicative setting. So this will concern the multiplicative group of complex numbers. I'm, so for me, varieties will always just mean their complex points. So GM is GMC, which is non-zero complex numbers. And inside here, of course, you have the rational points, subgroup of rational points, and they're not finitely generated because there are infinitely many prime numbers. But you can restrict yourself to study a finitely generated subgroup. So let gamma, let's say in Q bar, Q cross, be finitely generated. So you could pick your favorite finite set of prime numbers. And then the multiplicative analog of the Model conjecture is a theorem of Liade. From 1974. All right, so I've got the finitely generated group. And then we consider a curve V which is defined a curve V uh, in C cross squared, defined by, let's say, Fxy equals zero. And this has only finitely many points. x, y in gamma squared unless v is a multiplicative subgroup or translate of a multiplicative subgroup. So for example, x, y equals 2 is a translate of a multiplicative subgroup, and it has infinitely many points in the group generated by 2. Now, in fact, Liade's theorem is, is quite a bit stronger and proves the same finiteness for points in the division group squared. Actually, division group of gamma squared. 
And this leads us to a sort of a famous problem in this area. I like to call it Lang's toy problem. Because it somehow really is the very simplest problem of this, of this type. So if you take gamma to be the trivial group, then in Liardet's theorem, you are considering just uh, torsion points, roots of unity, points whose coordinates are both roots of unity on a curve. And you get this theorem. So it's in a paper of Lang from 1960. So I've told this story a bit out of order because this theorem was somehow on the way to formulating that problem. As he formulated gradually this um, model Lang type problem. So it's in the paper of Lang, but it has proofs that he gives, which are due to Ihara, Sayre, and Tate of the following theorem, which is the very simplest problem like this. A curve V in GM squared goes through only finitely many torsion points unless it is special so all right and special means of the form xn y to the m equals eta a root of unity where n and m are integers not both zero and this eta is a root of unity is it polynomial or is it a laurent equation it's a laurent polynomial yeah, 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 because n and m, right, are in z. Yes, so this, of course, is a translate of a, a, uh, of a subgroup. Well, if n and m are relatively prime, it's a translate of a subgroup, otherwise... Uh, it's a collection of translates, but I mean, w I should have said this V was irreducible and then these N and M's would be relatively prime, but it, it gets to be a lot of, uh, too much to write down about a very simple statement, but I should say that this word special is somehow backwards imported from the André Ort kind of setting. So I'm kind of uh, retrofitting the terminology, so we would call these torsion points the special points of this variety and these uh, these things are also called torsion cos torsion cosets because they are cosets of uh, irreducible subgroups by torsion points and these are the special subvarieties in this uh, in this variety so this is a kind of a retrofit terminology to make this look more like the Andre Ort and the Zulpa Pink conjectures. So this statement is the analog of Mann and Mumford in, in GM squared. And I now want to state Laurent's theorem. So let's put that here. So we want to now consider the generalization of that theorem to GM to the N. And we want to look for torsion points of 
on v. So certainly there will be infinitely many if v is a positive dimensional algebraic subgroup or a component of such. And these, together with the torsion points, are again what we're going to call the special subvarieties. Special subvarieties. will be torsion cosets, if you like, the irreducible components of algebraic subgroups, or the same thing in the translates of irreducible subgroups by torsion points. And these torsion points, of course, these include the torsion points which are torsion cosets of the trivial subgroup and which we'll also call special points. And then we have this theorem of Laurent. So Laurent proved something very much stronger that I'm going to say in a minute, but for the purposes of this story, I want to state this in a way very weak consequence, or special case. So this is the multiplicative Manin-Mumford conjecture, let's say, the theorem of Laurent from 1984, which we can state like this. Uh, let, let X be GMN and V be a subvariety of X there is a finite set of special subvarieties which are some varieties of V and they contain all the special points in V. So I've stated it that way for a reason that you'll see in a minute, which to make it look like the Andre Ort conjecture and to, to lead to the Zilber Pink conjecture. But as I said, that Laurent actually proved uh, something very much stronger, which is the Model Lang statement in this, in this setting, where you don't look for uh, just special points, but you intersect V with the division group of a finitely generated subgroup. So that was in 1984, and as I wrote at the very beginning, Faltings proved the Model conjecture in 1983, and then the subsequent work by Faltings and Hendry and others, and finally McQuillan in 95 proved the Model Lang uh, for the division group of a finitely generated uh, group in any semi abelian variety. So that was somehow the end of the Model Lang story, except well, except for effectivity questions, which are still very much open. But around that time, one had this new special point problem, which is the andre Ort conjecture. So let me talk a little bit about that. andre Ort conjecture. So this is due to Andre in 1989 and Ort in uh, 1994. And essentially in this statement one replaces the group variety here. So for Model Lang it would be an abelian variety. Here it's a group, it's a multiplicative variety or semi-abelian. But in Andre Ort, you replace this X by a Shimura variety. So if I just do this, 
let X be a Shimura variety. Shimura variety has a collection of special subvarieties and special points. Uh, then this is the Andre Ott conjecture. So I'm going to say a little bit about. Well, so this this Shimura variety. So this is analog of Mann and Mumford for a Shimura variety, which I'm going to call an SV, not an SUV, but an SV. So these varieties are central objects in arithmetic geometry, and the, the simplest examples are the modular curves. Maybe the paradigm examples are the Ziegel modular varieties, the Ziegel modular varieties AG, and then you have some more exotic ones, and you have the, the various special sub, sub varieties, the Hilbert modular varieties, and so on. I'm only going to really consider the very simplest example and sort of allude a bit to the other things. Um, <clears throat> so, what do I want to say? I want to talk a little bit first about the very simplest case, which concerns the modular curve, uh, which is A1, if you like, A1, the moduli space of elliptic curves. So an elliptic curve over the complex numbers is determined up to isomorphism over the complex numbers by one a single uh, complex invariant the so-called J invariant. So maybe I should write this, write something down. So an elliptic curve, which we know is the quotient of the complex numbers by some lattice, Z plus Z tau, uh, determined up to isomorphism over C by its J invariant, which is a complex number and can be any complex number, and thus Y1, the moduli space of elliptic curves, which I'll identify again with complex points, is simply the complex numbers, the moduli space of elliptic curves. And the analog of torsion points, the special points, are the so-called singular moduli, which are the J invariants of CM elliptic curves. And they're algebraic numbers, in fact they're algebraic integers, and they are uh, analytically dense in the complex numbers. I'll say a little bit more about them in a minute. And they have very elaborate arithmetic properties. And it's useful to think about this picture, I think, uh, in, as an analogy with, um, so we have the exponential map. which I'm going to modify. I'm going to take e to the z is e to the 2 pi i z. And in this picture, the torsion points in the multiplicative group correspond exactly to rational points up in the complex numbers. And the corresponding picture is that the modular curve y1 equals c is parameterized, uniformized, by the upper half plane under the J function, where J of Z is, well, Q, 1 over Q plus 744 plus the sum of CN in the Q expansion, CN Q to the N, where Q is this e to, e to the 2 pi i Z. 
And this takes z in the upper half plane to the j invariant of the, of the quotient of the complex numbers by the corresponding lattice. And so let's call this E of j of z um, right, sometimes you, one's tempted to index elliptic curves by the, by the tau, the generator of the lattice, but anyhow, it's more, well, it doesn't really matter. So typically, this elliptic curve will have only the integers as its endomorphisms, but sometimes there are extra endomorphisms which result when you're able to multiply the, 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 the lattice by a number that's not an integer. That's the complex multiplication. And those are the elliptic curves with CM, and their J invariants are the singular moduli, and they occur exactly when this tau is quadratic. So here we have rational points, which, if you like, give us the special points, the torsion points, and here the quadratic points give exactly the special points or the singular moduli. And that shows that they're dense and so on. And in that setup, the simplest case of the andre Ort conjecture is the theorem of Yves Andre. So this is Andre's theorem. From 1998. which is the, just simply the analog of this Lang problem. So just to say that um, the andre Ort conjecture is, is trivial, right, for one, if, 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 this, if this x is one-dimensional, then there are no interesting sub-varieties, and this conjecture, well, it's true. But uh, for the interesting cases, you need to go to dimension at least two, two and there you have this theorem. So let v in y1 squared be a curve, then v contains only finitely many special points. unless V is one of the following and these will define the special curves in Y1 squared so this is first possibility is you could be a vertical line a vertical line on a singular modulus, so in other words, V is just defined by the equation X equals sigma, where sigma is a special modulus. So we think of that as a vertical line, right, in the XY plane, or two, a horizontal line on a singular, on a special coordinate. Y is equal to some singular modulus, or three, a modular curve, classical modular curve. So I guess this word modular gets used a lot in modular curve. So this modular curve is not exactly the same as the modular curve. This is a modular curve, classical modular curve. And these are defined by the, the classical modular polynomials. So that means that V is such that phi sub n of x and y is zero, where this phi sub n is the classical modular polynomial that relates j of z and j of nz for some n. And then you can see, so the, I mean, if you, somehow the non-trivial statement here is that nz, j of nz and j of z do satisfy a polynomial relation, so it defines an algebraic curve, but then you can see that if z is quadratic, 
then nz is also quadratic. And so this curve obviously has infinitely many special points on it. Okay, and these are quite el very elaborate uh, polynomials. Which so that's Andre's theorem. So I guess I want to talk about the special subvarieties in y1 to the n. varieties because well this is the case I want to talk more specifically about about specific problems and it's also the really the maybe the only case where you can explicitly very explicitly write down exactly what these look like so I'm going to give a kind of a non-explicit description. They are the irreducible first, the irreducible components of varieties defined by any combination of one, two, and three over there. So you can, uh, you just, uh, you go through your coordinates and you say these two will satisfy a uh, modular relation and this one will be constant and equal, yeah? So you mean you replace x, y by any set of coordinates? Yes, yes, y1 to the n on x1 to the n, yep. So let's say on Yeah, so you might say x, some xi is equal to some singular modulus uh, or some xi and xj are related by a modular polynomial. So you have some choices uh, and those, when you do that, the variety you get will in general be reducible. And so you take irreducible components, but I'm gonna give a more explicit description so the special points of Yn are simply n tuples of singular moduli, special points in Y1. Well, and okay, a bit more concretely, so more concretely, or let's say equivalent definition is what happens is you impose these modular conditions is that you will in effect partition this set of coordinates into some which are constant and then other partitions of them which are all related by modular relations <clears throat> and then we can also make a bit explicit what these irreducible components are so a bit more concretely uh, let's consider h to the k mapping to y1 to the k. And I'll consider this h to the k, eventually that'll end up being any subset, some general subset of, of those coordinates. And I take some group elements, g, g2 up to gk minus 1 in uh, the GIs should be in GL2, Q with positive determinant to preserve the upper half plane. And then the image, which I'm going to call SG on, well, I'm going to imagine that this h to the k is on the coordinates 1 to the 1 up to k but later i'm going to replace this <laughs> by some general set of the coordinates okay i don't want to make this too heavy so the image which i'll call that which is in y1 
to the 1 up to k, right? So this, in general, this, I guess should, this should be an i sub 1 up to i sub k. That's what I should really do. But I, I don't want to do it. And that will be some general subset of those coordinates. Ah, but what is, what is it the image of? It's, of? it's of the map that sends z to z, g2 of z, up to gk of z. This is a k, not a k minus 1. <coughs> In h to the k, as z varies over h, this is a basic special curve. I'll call this a basic special curve. And then I can say that a general special subvariety of y1 to the n is a product of basic special curves which I'm now going to call S sub gj pj but now this pj will be part of a partition of the coordinates and, and special point uh, xj in y1 let's say to the p naught on some partition pj of 1 up to the n okay so you have right so you have this partition and on some part the uh, you, you take constant coordinates and on the other part they're related and the only other thing I have to say is that it's not really a partition I have to I really have to say it's a kind of it's, it's almost a partition because p naught is allowed to be empty there may be no fixed coordinates and of course you could get the whole of y1 to the n if you just take this partition to be just the individual just the individual coordinates, no modular relations at all. Okay, so that is, well, that's a fairly formal definition, and that's a fairly informal definition. And let me also say, so those are the special sub-varieties, but one also has the weekly special sub-varieties, And they are the products of basic special subvarieties and arbitrary points. Okay, so the constant coordinates can now be arbitrary. Yeah. Uh, is a usage to allow zero dimensional weekly special subvarieties? I'm sorry? Do you allow zero dimensional? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And the zero dimensional, yes. In fact, the zero dimensional special subvarieties are exactly the special points. So, P. Or the, in the definition of weekly. Yes, I allow arbitrary points. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yes. You have to allow that. Uh, right. And just to say, in, maybe in brackets here, that in GM to the N, the weekly specials are cosets of subtori. So let's call them torus cosets. Arbitrary cosets of irreducible algebraic subvarieties, as opposed to torsion cosets, where you think the the translate is by a torsion point. Okay? Right. So I've got that. I can now, I guess I could, well, we don't need that. So 
So I just want to say a little bit, well, a little bit about the general case. So in a Shimura variety X, we have a collection which I'm going to call curly S X of special subvarieties. And they include the special points which will always be the special subvarieties of dimension zero. And you have this wider collection, which I'm going to call W, curly W of X, of weakly special subvarieties. And that includes all the points. Points are weakly special. And these are somewhat complicated to describe. And in, for example, in the Ziegel modular varieties, they include the embeddings of Hilbert modular surfaces the loci where the abelian variety is not simple uh, and, and things like that. And in general, somehow the right description has to go through this GX description of Shimura varieties of Delin, and also in the mixed case, which I want to talk about, uh, or rather, which I don't want to talk about. And so it's, it's very, there's a very nice characterization due to Ulmo and Yafayev which is, which will, which I'll state this characterization and that will be useful. A characterization of Ulmo Yafayev. So this, the Shimura variety is uniformized by a suitable Hermitian symmetric domain U. So we can say that U has some X, maybe I should call this map little U. And if you like, the prototype for this is that H maps to Y1, or that the Ziegel upper half space maps to AG. Let's call this UG, UG. This is the J function. And secretly also, it's not a Shimura variety, but, but it is a mixed one. We've got our uniformization of C cross by E. Now, here C is itself an algebraic variety, but these other upper half plane is not an algebraic variety and neither is HG. These are sort of half spaces, but you can embed them naturally. So here H can be considered embedded in C or in the projective, projective space uh, more, more correctly. So here this U can be embedded in uh, this, uh, it has a Borel embedding into its compact dual u hat, which is, a, which is a true projective algebraic variety. And now we know what subvarieties are there. And so we can make a definition. So this is the compact dual, whatever that is. It's a projective algebraic variety. So we can make a definition. that an algebraic subvariety, subvariety, which I'll always take to be irreducible, of this Hermitian symmetric domain, which isn't algebraic, and so formally speaking, it has no algebraic subvarieties, but it does sit in this nice compact jewel. So we simply import the algebraic subvarieties from U hat. So is a component irreducible, complex analytically irreducible component of the intersection of A with U for some subvariety of the complex of the compact dual. And with that definition, we have a theorem, 
which is this characterization of Ulmo and Yafayev, that a subvariety of a Shimura variety X is weakly special. if and only if one or equivalently any component connected component of u inverse y is algebraic so this is the bi-algebraic picture of these uh, Shimura varieties that you have some things that are algebraic up here and they are also algebraic down here and those things are exactly the weakly special subvarieties, including all the points of course uh, and that also explains if you not doesn't explain it but it, it is also telling us what that is in the case of the J function. The bi-algebraic subvarieties for Y1 squared are exactly Z or here, well, NZ or more generally GZ for any G, GL2 Q plus matrix. So that's a characterization that will be useful for us and will also stand in for, I mean, I don't want to actually give all the definition. And then we have a, a fact about the uh, Shimura setup, a weakly special subvariety, weakly special, is special if and only if it contains a special point. And indeed, the special points in a Shimura variety are themselves bi-algebraic in the Q-bar sense. They're, if you put, you have to put an, an appropriate Q-bar structure on this compact jewel. And the simplest example of this is, the, is well, again, I've, we've seen, is, is the J function, where the special points in the upper half plane are the quadratic points, and they are by q bar algebraic in that the images of those are Q-bar points and the, the famous theorem of Schneider is that these are the only by Q-bar algebraic points for the J function. So the generalization of that factor AG is due to uh, Paula Cohen and, and Shiga and Wolfart uh, and it's conjectured but it's not known for the Shimura varieties that are not of abelian type. So in general, it's known that if you're a special point here, it's always true that up here, you're algebraic over Q-bar in the right structure and of bound, some bounded degree. Here it's quadratic. Um, but it's, it's not known in general that those are the only by Q-bar algebraic points, although it's known for AG and for the so-called abelian type. So that means that this theorem can be sharpened in those cases. So this is uh, U also UY in an abelian type, one that is either a sub uh, AG or a special sub variety or one that's uh, somehow comparable to that, a sub variety y of x is special if and only if it is what you might call by q bar algebraic but y is defined over q bar and and one or equivalently all of its components of its pre-image are algebraic sub varieties of the symmetric domain defined over q bar So that, in principle, all right, so that is what I want to say about the Shimura variety and its special sub-varieties. 
I want to say a little bit more because I want to talk about generalized Andre Ort because we somehow have to mention mixed Shimura varieties. So this is still a more general special point problem. So many Shimura varieties are moduli spaces of some group varieties. So for example, modular curves are moduli of elliptic curves, or AG is a moduli of abelian, principally polarized abelian varieties, and so on. And one can consider the mixed Shimura variety, which in those cases uh, are the the vibration of the object of the, of, the, of the object you are the moduli of by the object you're parameterizing. So a particular nice case is if you somehow fiber AG by the corresponding abelian varieties. So this will be what I call, this is the mixed Ziegel space. And the simplest example Simplest example is the Legendre family of elliptic curves, which is the family x to x minus 1 x minus lambda considered as a fiber over the complex numbers lambda except 0 and 1 and infinity if you like I mean because it's c and of course it, it, if, if lambda is 0 or 1 then we get repeated roots here and it's it's not uh, um, we don't get an elliptic curve so here, if you like, this is, this is the elliptic curve E lambda fibered over C minus 0, 1, which is another word for the complex points of the modular curve Y2. What have I done? X minus lambda, the last one. You, you, you take X minus 1, X minus 1. X minus lambda. Here. Good. Right, so it's somehow here one uses lambda 2 because over lambda 1 you have ramification and it's not so convenient to set up such families. So if you have this, so here is y2, it's exactly this picture and here you have all the elliptic curves E lambda and here there's a break, there are a couple of points missing, right? at 0 and 1, where they become, they degenerate. And the special points in, so this is L, the special points in L are simply the torsion points in the CM fibers. So you have to be a CM elliptic curve and you have to be a torsion point. And in this setting, the generalized Andre Ort theorem is due to, again, Yves Andre, uh, to Andre. All right. And so with all of that, we can state the generalized Andre Ort, generalized Andre Ort of Andre which looks exactly like Laurent's theorem. Well, it's exactly that. Um, so maybe I should just point over there. It's exactly that statement for a mixed Shimura variety. Generalized. And here we put M. Mixed Shimura variety, it's exactly that statement. So for Shimura varieties, that statement uh, has been announced as a theorem. A couple of 
year and a half ago or so by, by me and Anand Shankar and Jacob Zimmerman. And it builds on a lot of work of us and others, of Klingler Umo Yafayev, and also uh, Binyamini Schmidt Yafayev, which I hope to explain in the end of next lecture, and others. And it also depends crucially on something called the average Colmes conjecture. I don't think, I, I, yeah, the average Colmes conjecture, which is a very subtle uh, arithmetic statement about the heights of special points and was proved independently by Andriata, Gorin Howard, Madapusi, Pera, and Yuan, and Zhang. And the mixed case, in each particular case of a mixture more of variety, the generalized Andre Ort follows from the Andre Ort for the pure case by a theorem of uh, Z and Gal. All right, so I'm not, I don't think I'll say too much more, a little bit more about that, but not too very much more. But we thus have a collection of what I will call special point problems, a collection of special point problems. So I should say that the mixed Shimura variety does include the multiplicative group. The multiplicative group is a mixed Shimura variety, which occurs inside when you parameterize not abelian varieties, but semi-abelian varieties. Uh, and so this special point problem now includes all of the problems that we've talked about. And these are all theorems, or at least announced as theorems, very little is effective. There are some effective cases of Andre Ort due to Kuna uh, and Bilu Massa Zanya and to Binyamini and Massa. But in the meantime, in the meantime, as we have this new conjecture, which I'm going to talk about now, which is the Zilba pink conjecture, and it takes place in this setting of mixed Shimura varieties and their special sub-varieties. And I think now is a very good time to take 10 minutes break. Okay, so we'll take 10 minutes break. Yeah. So what is more than long in the case of Shimura varieties? Well, model Lang well, model Lang for Shimura varieties, I think, is the case of intersecting with Hecker orbits. Absolutely. I do think that. I'm going to talk a bit about that. So the name of the young girl was really uh, meant to be yes, realized on this. Yes. I had never realized it before. Yes. Gal by gal. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> okay. So uh, let's... Uh, Resume. So I can now state this, finally, this Zilba pink conjecture. Uh, which was somehow formulated independently by, by three people or groups of people, by, by Zilba, by Bombieri, Massa and Zanya and by pink. So Zilba somehow did it first and pink did it in the most general way, so it somehow ended up being called Zilba pink. And it depends on the notion of an atypical intersection. Atypical intersection. So here it is. So if you have sub-varieties V and W of some variety X, which is smooth, and in the mixed Shimura case, they aren't always smooth, although you can always make them smooth by taking a finite cover. But for the moment, just consider two varieties V and W in some smooth variety X, then a component if you intersect them, of the intersection is atypical. 
simply if it's atypical in dimension, meaning that the co-dimension of A is bigger than the sum, is less than the sum of the co-dimensions. And so somehow the, the conditions defining V and W have not been independent in some sense. They've allowed this component which has too small a co-dimension. Because one typically, so it's called atypical because typically you expect these things to simply add. So now we can let X be a mixed Shimura variety. So this is Pink's version. Well, this is, well, uh, and V, a sub-variety of X. And we're going to take, for the Ws, we're going to take all the special sub-varieties. So we call A sub-variety of V atypical if there is a T in the special sub-varieties of X. So I should have said that the mixed Shimura variety has also a collection of special and weakly special sub-varieties. So we take some special sub-variety with A, a component of V intersect T, and a typical, but now writing that in the sense of the dimensions, that the, the dimension of A is bigger than the dimension of T plus the dimension of V minus the dimension of X. Right, that's just a rewriting of this where you replace the dimension by dim X minus dim V and dim X minus dim W. So that is an atypical component. It's an atypical intersection with a special sub-variety. And then the conjecture is So here, I should have said, finally, that we let a tip of V be the union of all the atypical sub-varieties over all the special sub-varieties. And then the conjecture, which is ZP, is that this a tip of V is a finite union of such things. Or otherwise put, it's an algebraic subvariety or closed algebraic subset. Or equivalently that there are finitely many maximal atypical components. And the point is that you've got the, 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 the collection of special subvarieties is, is always countably infinite if you're positive dimensional. And so although you have countably many possibilities for components here, and you could imagine that you get some terrible mess that's not, that's not a finite union or a closed algebraic subset, that indeed you get one. So this is zilber pink conjecture, finiteness statement for such things. All right, so maybe I should say that Zilba formulated this in the semi-abelian case uh, in bombieri Massazania, uh, also ma mainly actually in, in the multiplicative setting. That, but they formulated it sort of, there's a number of different formulations that, which are equivalent ways of putting this. Pink formulated a bit differently that the union of atypical things is not Zariski dense unless uh, something happens uh, so what I formulated here, if you like, is Pink's conjecture in the strongest settings, mixed Shimura varieties, but in the Zilba or Bombieri Massazania way. But there are a number of different formulations, and I may give formulation in a minute uh, that I like a particular formulation. And again, coming from three different people, and I'm going to explain the motivations a little bit, because I think it's really interesting. There's a bit of terminology, so if, 
a kind of extreme case of an atypical intersection is where you would expect A to be uh, not to exist. So if, if you take a curve in a three-dimensional mixture more variety and you intersect it with a special curve, you're intersecting two one-dimensional sub-varieties in the three-dimensional ambient. So this number here would be negative. And those intersections are called unlikely. Those are the intersections that you expect not to happen. Whereas these ones, so the, and the atypical ones include those, they're the ones that are atypical in dimension. And there's also the word anomalous, which was used for positive dimensional. Where you expect them to be there, but they're bigger than you, they're somehow bigger than you expect. So that's the words that get used in, 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 in various papers. Now, a kind of a trivial case of all of this is that, for example, if V itself is contained in a proper special subvariety of X, then V will be atypical. And then this union will just be V and, you know, conjecture's true. That's the end of, end of the story. And that's somehow why a lot of the theorems in this area come with unless clauses. You only get finitely many of these unless this, and that unless is usually the case that the variety itself is in a special position. And so, for example, for a curve, V in X, and a typical component is either an unlikely point, so a typical component is either an unlikely point, point that shouldn't be there, or the curve itself. There are no other possible subvarieties, and V will be atypical if it's contained in a proper special subvariety. And that's why you get the formulations on the board that are no longer there anymore, that there are only finitely many special points unless V is special. So there are various formulations, which I'm going to talk about the optimal formulation briefly. And I should say also that, uh, so the other thing to say about this conjecture and I'll, is that it's widely open. It's very much open conjecture. Even in the multiplicative case, it's open in GM5. I believe it's known for everything up in GM4, GM to the 4, but it starts to be open for surfaces in GM to the 5. Uh, but also in the meantime, it has been extension, there's an extension to variations of mixed Hodge structure due to Klingler. And something also I like to mention here, and it may be useful later, that there's a quite nice analog of this whole picture. So this is a kind of an analog. Due to Chatsidakis Gioka Massa and Morin. So it's a kind of a version of all of this without any mixed Shimura varieties. So you simply take, you simply consider all algebraic subvarieties, let's say of C to the N, and you decide that the special ones are the ones over Q bar. So you have these and now you have the exact silver pink statement that in this uh, you consider a, an, an intersection, you take a subvariety of a C of C to the N, and you look at, at its intersections with Q bar subvarieties, and you say that they're atypical. You say exactly that, they're atypical if the dimension is too big, and then you have exactly that as a theorem. So that's something that may that we may, it may come up. I'm sorry? With this formulation? It's a theorem. 
Yes, it's most amazing. Yeah. So I want to talk about the formulation uh, of optimal sub-varieties. So this is a fact that special and weakly special sub-varieties as collections are closed under taking components of intersections. And this leads to various nice ways of formulating things with collections of, uh, that you just have a variety with certain collections. That's where this sort of fits in a way. You can just view it that way. So you have, for example, Baro, Aero, Dill and their distinguished categories where they can somehow set all of this up in a quite axiomatic framework. Uh, but it, it, it means that if, and this is going back to, to the way Pink set things up, if you have a sub-variety of a mixed Shimura variety, you have a smallest special, which I'm going to call left angle, right angle V, smallest special which contains V. You simply take the intersection of all the special sub-varieties that contain V, and that you take the component that contains V, and uh, that will be this uh, smallest special sub-variety, and, and also for weeklies, right? So I won't uh, define that separately. And it gives this, you can then make a notion of a defect, the defect of V, delta V is the dimension of the special closure of V this minus the dimension of V. And if you like, this measures how far away V itself is from being special, because this is zero if V is special. And otherwise, it isn't. So this again, this is Pink's setup. But now we can call, um, call a sub-variety a in V optimal if it is maximal for its defect among all sub-varieties. But you can't make A bigger as a sub-variety while keeping the same defect. The defect has to get bigger if you make the variety bigger. And so V itself is optimal because whatever its defect is, you can't make it any bigger. Uh, but anything, anything else that's optimal has to, so, so to speak, have a smaller defect than V. And special sub-varieties have defect zero. So if you like the conjecture, which is equivalent, if, if quite formally equivalent to Zilba Pink, is that for a mixed Shimura variety X and V, a sub-variety of X, there are only finitely many optimal sub-varieties. And then you get rid of the unless clauses, you see, because this is intrinsic, this somehow notion is intrinsic to V, which knows somehow about its special closure. Otherwise, if you take V in, 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 in GN, GM to the N, but it happens to be contained in some uh, special sub-variety, then, well, then that, in that form, the conjecture becomes trivial, but it's all equivalent. Yeah. 
Does Andrea have quite strong maybe some defect equal one? Defect zero. Defect zero is is, is special subvarieties. Yeah, so you can also make a version, if you like, it implies things for each defect. Anyhow, you can do many formal manipulations with these conjectures. I just wanted to maybe say a little bit about silver pink and special point problems, since we started with the special point problems. So if X is a mixed Shimura variety and you have a subvariety which is not X, then a special point on V is unlikely and atypical because the special point has dimension zero so you've got the zero dimensional thing and the V which has dimension less than X and you're intersecting in X so that's atypical so in the finitely many maximal form of ZP so on ZP, we assume ZP, uh, you have finitely many maximal atypical AI, which are components of V intersect with some TIs, right? The TIs are special. And so if you're a special point on V, you would need to lie on one of those AIs. But if AI is not equal to TI, if it's smaller than the special that, it's, that gives the intersection, then the special point will again be unlikely in AI as a subvariety of TI, and you'll apply Zilber Pink again, and you'll keep going until finally these AIs are all actual uh, they are TIs. That's the only thing that stops that process. And that means, so therefore, silver pink indeed implies all the special point problems in mixed Shimura varieties. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about GMN and the Bombieri Massa Zanya. So maybe we'll go over here. Unlikely intersections. Ooh. Uh, unlikely. All right. Let's just call it GMN. So, as I said, Bombieri, Massasania also formulated this conjecture in GMN, but they did that after having studied some and proved some theorems in special cases. So these cases were. So studied by Bombieri, Massa, and Zanya. Maybe I should write out their names. And they were motivated by a question of Schinzel from 1989, studying reducibility of lacunary polynomials. So a lacunary polynomial means a polynomial with finitely many terms. But if you vary the degrees of those terms, you're really taking a hypersurface in GMN and intersecting it with a one-dimensional group variety, group subvariety, not G, right? By putting in different powers of X in the different terms. So there was this problem that Schinzel came up with, which was a special case of, the, of, a, of a curve in GMN. So if you consider a curve in GMN, then your unlikely points are the points that lie in a special subvariety of, of, um, of co-dimension at least two. The curve should not intersect those. So look for x, y, z in V that satisfy two independent multiplicative conditions. That's an equivalent K 
conditions. That's an equivalent formulation to lying on some algebraic subgroup of dimension 1. And here, so the Bombieri Massazenia proved this under a stronger assumption, but the theorem is due to Morin. Well, and it's exactly the silver pink statement that there are only finitely many such points. But you're taking n equal to 3? or? I'm sorry? Are you taking n equal to 3 or an arbitrary? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, no, you're right. I mean, they proved the theorem for arbitrary n, but in my head, I'm thinking of just the example when n equals 3. Yeah. So, but you're right. I, I, <laughs> I somehow need to switch into one state or the other somehow. For, but yeah. I mean, they proved it in general. I, I don't want to. There are only finitely many such points unless V itself satisfies a non-trivial multiplicative condition. All right, so bombieri Massazania proved this if V itself doesn't lie in a proper weakly special subvariety. So they had a stronger hypothesis, if you like, not the right hypothesis, which they talked about. And as an example of this, which I kind of, it's, it's their kind of example, but which I sort of like. So this is an example after Bombieri, Massa, You could consider a curve. So let's consider V equals the set of X, Y, Z, U, V, W in C cross to the 6, X, Y, Z, U, V, W, which is simply a, par a parameterized curve. X is T, Y is 1 minus T, Z is, say, T cubed plus 5T plus 7, U is 2, V is 3, and W is 5. So that's some curve in C cross to the sixth. And if you consider some point that lies in a subgroup of dimension one, in other words, has two independent multiplicative conditions. So consider x, y, z, u, v, w with two multiplicative conditions then you can consider what they look like. So, or well, maybe x and z are both roots of unity. That would be two multiplicative conditions. And then you're studying essentially the Mann in Mumford multiplicative for, on these two coordinates, or on x and y, or on any two coordinates. Or maybe, let's say x and y both satisfy a multiplicative condition with respect to u, v, and w. So they're in the division group generated by 2, 3, and 5. And there you see that you're asking the model lang problem, let's say on x plus y equals 1, the, the unit equation in a multiplicative finite, uh, finitely generated in a division group <laughs> of a finitely generated group. Or maybe you just have two general conditions on two non-fixed coordinates, and then you have really a totally new kind of problem. So that's supposed to illustrate that um, the Zilber pink conjecture includes Mann in Mumford because that's the special points. It also includes Model Lang, uh, but it, it somehow goes very much further and, and it is open. All right. So BMZ also proves this in co dimension two and also for intersections with subgroups of, uh, of dimension one. So quite a bit of is known. And the most general result is uh, Habegger, 
that if you're prepared to um, habega finiteness, let's just finiteness. I'll write it down and then I'll explain it. So when you consider atypical intersections of a subvariety in GMN, you can distinguish two kinds. There are the points, the unlikely ones, and the positive dimensional ones, which are called anomalous. And the anomalous intersections are the positive dimensional things that are too high intersections with special subvarieties. But if you're prepared to, to, to if you like, so, so the conjecture, if you like, says that outside the anomalous locus, there are only finitely many unlikely points. But if you're prepared to throw out a bigger locus, which is the atypical intersections with weakly specials, so that's a much bigger locus, then you get a theorem of Habegger, that outside the anomalous locus, the weakly anomalous locus, you get only finitely many unlikely points. Um, right. Now, I want to talk about abelian varieties. So I can do that over here. I can start here. We've got our conjecture. Maybe we can leave that up for a minute. So let's talk about abelian varieties. So for abelian varieties, they're group varieties. So you can define, you can define special subvarieties and special points. just as in the GMN case, as torsion cosets. You can do that. And you'll get all the right statements. But strictly in the mixed Shimura setting, if A so let's call A will be our abelian variety. Now, if A is not a CM abelian variety, then actually none of those specials are special in the mixed Shimura sense. So they're, they're simply not special. This abelian variety is a weakly special inside that uh, the uh, mixed Ziegel thing. And this seems to have been Pink's motivation for trying to... So Pink was trying to combine Mordell Lang and Andre Ort. And he saw that the special point problem for mixed Shimura varieties implies Mann in Mumford for CM abelian varieties, but not for general abelian varieties. But a torsion point, if you take V in A, and if we consider here AG, and over it we have the fibration, which is XG, and let's, I'm going to write the dimension of AG as just big G. And the dimension of the fiber is G, of course, the abelian variety. And some of these things are special, and their torsion points are special, and then their special point problems are included in, in the special point problem. But Pink saw that if you're a non-special, if you're just some A that's not, uh, that's not special, that a torsion point on V is an intersection with a torsion section and, and it's unlikely. And that's because the dimension of this mixed space is G plus G, the dimension so let's imagine that this we're considering this V now to be not in A, but to be in the whole space. 
in the full space Xg, the dimension of T is G, because these things are dominant to the base, and the dimension of V, because it's a subvariety if it's not equal to A, is less than G, and so it's an unlikely intersection. And this seems to have been Pink's motivation after he, he first uh, tried uh, a different way. So, uh, right, so in this way you can see eventually that the, the Zilber Pink conjecture as I wrote it implies Manin Mumford and Mordell Lang for a general abelian variety. And for abelian varieties in general, you have the same result by the same Habegger, the, the same statement. Uh, and Pink had earlier tried a, another way of combining them involving Hecker orbits. So if instead of looking at special points, you look at the Hecker orbit, I don't want to say too much about this, the Hecker orbit um, of points in the Shimura variety, and you can define a Hecker orbit somehow in a, in a mixed Shimura variety, but there are a number of different ways of, of doing this, then he had a different conjecture, which implies Mordell Lang for a general abelian variety, but did not imply the full Andre Oort. It only implied Andre Oort for, for special points in a Hecker orbit. And the special points don't form one or a finite union of Hecker or orbits. So that, I don't want to say too much about that conjecture. Uh, that's the so-called Andre Pink Zania conjecture. which is about intersections with Hecker orbits. And so the main thing, so there is a number of ways of defining Hecker orbits that can be bigger or smaller. And uh, uh, Richard Yafayev have recently proved Andre Pink Zania, this is the full conjecture for the Shimura varieties of abelian type. And anyhow, they have various notions, increasingly large notions of Hecker orbits that give uh, stronger conjectures. And, uh, but what I wanted to mention is that in Andre's book on G functions where he formulates the Andre Oort conjecture, he also formulates a prototype of this Andre Pink Zania. He formulates this, so there are a few problems at the end of this chapter. And one is the Andre Oort conjecture and one is about Hecker orbits being dense in something. And he also has a problem that's a kind of precursor on unlikely intersections because he has this whole section where he talks about the endomorphisms in the fibers of a pencil of an abelian variety. So he has a pencil of abelian varieties where you suppose that the, there's, it's, hard, it's not contained in any proper, in any, uh, sp proper special subvariety and it has generic uh, endomorphisms of just the integers, and he wants to study the fibers where this thing acquires an extra endomorphism. And that always comes because you're in some special. And uh, so he had a precursor of all of these kinds of problems. So I want to talk about Zilber's motivation, and that may just about bring us to the end. And that will connect a little bit with my lecture next week. And this book was also in 1989. I think it's quite interesting that these precursor problems and Shinsel thinking about lacunary polynomials somehow uh, all, all in that same, uh, well, those two publications in the same year. So this is Zilber's motivation was from the model theory of complex exponentiation. Although what I'm going to explain, there's no model theory in, in, in this. It's all to do with Shanwell's conjecture. So here it is. Well, there will be one model theoretic. The word model theory will occur in, at the end. So here's Shanwell's conjecture. If Z1 up to Zn are complex numbers, then the transcendence degree over Q of the Zs and their exponentials 
is at least n unless z1 up to zn are linearly dependent over q, right? And in that case, the exponentials will acquire an algebraic dependence too, and you can't guarantee this n. So this is a very open conjecture, okay? So on the one side, if the z's are algebraic numbers, then you get the lindemann weierstrass theorem, which is a theorem. But if you take the e to the z's to be algebraic numbers and the z's to be logarithms, then you get a very open problem where the, the only thing known, or the best thing known is Baker's theorem, that the z's are linearly independent of a q bar, unless you have that condition. And equivalently put, so uh, equivalently, if you do have a dependence, of, a q dependence on the z's, that'll give you a multiplicative dependence. You'll, you can toss out one z and one e to the z, but another way of saying is that the transcendence degree over q of the zi's and the e to the zi's is at least the linear dependence over q of the zi's. So that takes care of, then there's no one less in the statement. Now, this is what we want to do. So I can move that. Now suppose that V is an algebraic subvariety of Vn cross C cross to the N defined over Q bar and the dimension of V is less than N. And suppose that I have a point Z, so Z with the bar on top will mean Z1 up to Zn, okay? So I have a point Z bar and X per Z bar, which belongs to V. And then, on Shanwell's conjecture, the Z's must lie on a linear space. Z lies in L, which is a proper Q rational subspace. of C to the N. And now I let W in C cross to the N be the projection of V and with D equals dim V minus dim w, the generic fiber dimension outside some v prime, right? So there'll be a proper special subvariety, maybe not irreducible v prime, outside of which the projection of v to w has its generic dimension. And I'll let t be the projection of L. Well, so that's exp L, right? The projection of L. But, I mean, the projection map is, is the exponential map. And let's suppose that, uh, yeah, now I'm going to let X be, of course, the projection of Z. So this is a point in GM. This was our point uh, in this variety V, and I suppose that, that Z is in V but not V prime. So that the, the fiber, the dimension of the projection is generic. And, in, in, and so uh, X 
belongs to some component, it's in W because it's in the projection of V and it's in the, con it's in, <laughs> it also lies in the uh, projection T, so it lies in some component of that intersection. And now we do a computation that the dimension of T on Shanwell's conjecture is less than or equal to the transcendence degree of a Q bar of Z and X of Z, Z bar. But that transcendence degree, X lies in this variety A and, and, uh, and Z lies um, in something algebraic, the fiber dimension of V uh, the pre-image of A under this projection, which has fiber dimension D. So this is less than, it lies, and that's a, this is algebraic, this is V is over Q bar, this is over Q bar, this is over Q bar. So this transcendence degree, this point, lies in a variety whose dimension is at most dim A plus D. And D, on the other hand, is less than or equal to so this is now dim A plus dim V minus dim W because that's what D is. And the dimension of V is less than N. because n has, v has dimension less than n. And therefore, A is atypical. A is atypical because the dimension of A is greater than the dimension of T plus the dimension of W minus the dimension of n. And so this means so this was somehow what Zilber wanted to do was, well, so let's just say it, the sentence, this means, so this point of the exponential graph in this variety V means that you're in an atypical intersection. And if the atypical intersections are some finite describable set, it means that the Shanwell conjecture can be rephrased as a whole sequence, infinite sequence of statements for every V over Q bar. If this belongs to that, then <laughs> it's in one of those. And it means that the Shanwell's conjecture can be expressed in the first order theory of the complex exponential and is more or less equivalent to that expressibility. So, okay, that was Zilber's motivation somehow, or the way he came to this, that this trying to make Shanwell's conjecture a bit more explicit, exactly what happens if Z, X, Z is in some variety. All right, so I think I can stop there. That's my good place to stop. And uh, we'll take it up next week. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we'll stop there. Apart from questions, well, I mean, there can be questions or not. Yeah, in the Shanwell conjecture, I, 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 think I like to use uh, instead of exponential, the exponential 2 i pi d. And then uh, yes. the, the linear dependence of the Q becomes something different, which is just that the image of z1 zn is in a special subarray. Yes, yes. And, and this has the advantage that you can formulate it for any uh, yes. Shimura variety, anything. Uh, so because this Q linear dependence, it's more difficult to to describe it in a hyperbolic context, for example. Or yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I should check. I don't know. I assume that something very much like this should still work. It's a, it's a slightly weaker conjecture, right? You basically have thrown away the transcendence of pi. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. at the end it's, a, it's yeah. equivalent. It's a, but if you have a uniformization of, uh, say, a Shimura variety, 
and you can say uh, the degree, the transcendence degree of u uh, point x and u of x is at least uh, yes the dimension of the variety if uh, it's uh, or something like this. And, uh, uh, yeah, and that would be some. And it's harder to say it if you say. It. Yeah. Yes, that's absolutely right. Yes. No, that's absolutely right. It's a bit... Yes, it's funny then. So historically, it's more natural to use the exponential, but for, as you said at the beginning, you use exponential twice. Yes, because then you get the exact lining up. Otherwise, you're rational multiples of pi. Yes. Yeah, for, 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 for saying that something is by algebraic, if and only, by cube algebraic, if and only if it's torsion or... Yes. Then you have to use exponential to write. Yes, yes, that works out much better. But you also do lose the nice differential equation. E2 pi i doesn't satisfy an algebraic differential equation. Completely as you write. Okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, you're right. And I imagine this would still work. I mean, this is, well, that's the classical conjecture. And that's, that was the computer. I think, yeah, that's the, the computation. But maybe... No, you're right. In this, in the mixed Shimura context, it's the e to two pi i z is works a little bit, works nicer, for sure. But does it? Yeah. I mean, there should be a full conjecture, though. In right, the the, the Grothendieck, uh, the, the 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 Andre period. I mean, there should be a general conjecture for the transcendence. Oh, yeah, and it's that because there is no right. There is no pi. <laughs> there is no pi. Uh, uh, right. Right. And, in, yeah. and yeah, there are relations with what any conjecture, uh, period conjecture, but you can formulate it in general. Yes. Hmm. And I, I mean, I don't know in logic term it should imply something. Uh, but, uh, the uh, general generic conjecture is something uh, definable in one first. Uh, yeah, there, there's a kind of an interesting problem there, which is that all of those theories become very bad, starting with the J function, because it's only defined on a half plane. And it's very hard to set up the model theory in a way that you don't see <laughs> the real line. And then all the model theory becomes very bad. So it's kind of mysterious that the the rest of the picture looks great. You know, because Zilba, of course, had his, this is all part of his, he had this uh, pseudo exponential, right, that you could set up. But you sort of, and, and I'm, we've talked about it and, and also with students, you, you, it seems that you can't make a pseudo J function. I mean, it has nice properties because it's only defined on a half a plane. And then you see the plane you see the line, and the model theory becomes very... Especially, the, there is a second problem of Schneider to prove the transcendence of J of tau using the property of J, and this is open. Yes, yes, that's a great problem. So, a pseudo exponential is something satisfying Schneider conjecture and the property of exponential except continuity or something like that. Except what? That the function is not continuous or something? Uh, essentially, yes. Well, I mean, this is more, I mean, well, I actually, I wasn't planning to talk about it to next week, but yeah, it's, a, it's an abstract. It's an algebraically closed field, uncountable algebraically closed field with an exponential, which is on two and whose uh, kernel is uh, cyclic with a trend. I mean, it, and it satisfies Shanwell and it satisfies a kind of a dual conjecture, which is that you can solve every equation that's not excluded. And then Zilber showed that you could A, construct such an object. It, it's not continuous, as you say, there's no, it's just a field with a, with a map on it. You can construct such an object which satisfies Shanwell, satisfies the dual Shanwell and all the other properties. And it is the unique such object of, of in, each cardin, in each uncountable cardinality. It's a, it's a unique object. And so then the conjecture becomes that C with its exponential does indeed model that theory. And it's not quite a first order theory because you're 
kernel is countable and so on. And that seems to be very difficult to do in, in any meaningful way for, for the J function or for any of these other functions. Because, yeah, although now you're going to say, why do you care about the half plane if there's no topology anyway? But <laughs> it means that you can't really, what it means is that on the upper half plane, there's no field structure. I mean, you can do some things, but uh, so you can't say I've got a map from a field to a field which does this. You can do the two sorted. You can consider a two sorted structure and then you can do everything. And, and that's what these results of uh, Dor Harris and Etorovich, you get categoricity. Anyway, that's, I think, yeah. Yeah, so we'll, def we'll stop there.